Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We got another breakfast burrito. And I, hold up, hold on a second. Okay, so this has a, it's got an Indian smell coming off of it. Like Indian spices, you know, like a, almost a, well, <laughs> it's got a curry slash buffalo sauce smell coming off of it. This is the Jefe de Jefe. This is a King Jefe breakfast burrito. King Jefe's in downtown Florence, for those of you that don't know, right beside where that new Bojangles should be going up real soon. They got a couple of burritos. This is the breakfast burrito. Hash browns, fried egg, cheese, bacon, chorizo, and there's a crema in there also. Um, so yeah, the size on this is good. This is not quite as large as the Down Country Grill burrito that we just did, but it's still pretty large burrito, so. All right, let's get right in there and check it out. Then to drink, I got one of these poppy, poppy sodas. Somebody trying to make a healthier soda alternative. These actually aren't that bad though. Sounds like soda to me. Not that bad. All right, let's get another bite of this and then let's start to discuss. Oh, that's what it was. I forgot. No, there's a sriracha maple drizzle on this. That's what, and... Yeah, that's what that is. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I've never had this burrito and I didn't have a preconceived notion or a pre-planned game plan or anything. I'm gonna go over this on the fly with y'all in real time. The first thing that jumped out to me with this is immense flavor. There's a lot of flavor going on with this, which would be expected with the ingredients list on it. The hash browns on this one aren't the shredded ones. There's a little, ah, well, okay. I said hash browns, tater tots. They're tater tots. So let's cut right to the chase on it. It's really good. The heat level, which I'm guessing would have to be from that sriracha maple, maybe the chorizo is really low. I like it spicy. So that's a good thing for me to have that element in here. It's full of flavor. I like to be able to switch up to the tater tot style instead of the shredded hash browns as an option from some of the other breakfast burritos we've looked at. It's definitely loaded down. I honestly probably would like maybe one more egg in there. And I'd like to have the crema sauce on the side, I think, so I could dip it or pour it. And then I think I would prefer to have that sriracha maple on the inside or also on the side. Maybe that would work too, so that I could dip it or pour it so it's not quite so sticky. But I definitely like where it's going though. It's got kind of a smoky type vibe going, which is definitely up my alley with a slight hint of pancakes, bringing in that breakfast vibe. That's that maple and uh, yeah, there's nothing to complain about here other than maybe the maple being on it and making it sticky like that. I wouldn't necessarily prefer that, but you could just adjust that when you order it. So here's where I'm at. I think this is our third breakfast burrito that we've looked at. And I think all three that we've looked at so far have a unique value. So if it was me, right, I just try to make it practical. I can't speak for everybody else. If it was me and I am me, then what's probably going to happen is I will probably most frequently eat the Saguaro's burrito. So we did this video with them. For one, that Chipotle sauce that he has is fantastic. I'd really like to have that with this, but there's nuance to it. For one, he has the largest variety. The burrito's a little bit smaller, which probably for me personally would be a good thing at breakfast time. He's usually set up pretty early and it's location. So for this burrito and the Down Country Grill burrito would be on the opposite side of town for me. So if my location was on that side, that could change this. The Down Country Grill Burrito was really good. And the way that you know is I found myself, even now as I'm saying this, wanting to go back and get another one and not eat it on camera so I could just take my time with it and uh, enjoy it without doing this part. But this one's really good too. This one is nuanced. 
So it's got its own flavor profile with the sriracha maple packed with the chorizo, the different style of hash brown with the tater tots and all of that going on. It's different. I'd get it fresh in the restaurant and tweak it. This one's definitely a good option. So for me, it really would be situational. All three of these are good options. So we got some good breakfast burritos going on. And if I understand correctly, Effie Pops also has a breakfast burrito, which I'm sure is probably good. And I haven't had that one yet. I need to get over there and try that one. Del May also has a breakfast burrito. It's not bad. It's going to be a smaller on the go than any of these other three type of variety, but it's also not bad. And this poppy soda, prebiotic, four grams of sugar is not bad. Now we're gonna shift gears. This is the Little Debbie Fall lineup. And we are about to try and rank these right now. Now due to convenience because of where I was at and timing, I actually stopped at the new food line to pick these up. And that's the first time I've been in there. That's the first time I've been in that store since it was Piggly Wiggly. And you know what? It is the nicest food line that we have in town now. They've got the self checkout, but it's just like, I felt like we didn't need another food line. I shop at Food Line by the house. If you watched our Places We Shop video, you saw that that's one of the places on our list. There are a small handful of other grocery stores that I wish would have been in that spot. But you know what? It's not about me. But I also know I'm not the only person in Florence that feels that way. But it's nice though. It is the nicest food line we have and the self-checkout's nice. Can be a convenience thing, so. You know, so be it. The first one is the chocolate fall party cakes. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a good chance this one's gonna finish number one for me. And the reason why is my grandmother, back in the day, back in the 90s, little Debbie used to make these same cakes, but they had a little grid on the top right there of chocolate wax icing. And she would keep a cookie jar full of these at all times. And I probably ate hundreds of those in my childhood. And you just can't compete with the nostalgia factor in life. It's just that way. So it's gonna be hard for any of these other ones to take that spot. And so I already know what this is, but see now to my knowledge, this is the only time of year that you can get these. They don't make them anymore year round. They were basically the chocolate version of the zebra cake, if you remember. This is a classic flavor for me. All right, so right now in first place, chocolate fall party cakes. I will say this, this is going to be controversial. Little Debbie's, especially if you don't get the run when it's super fresh, they're kind of dry. Something you probably didn't notice as a kid, but you notice now. And I am going to say this is controversial, but tasty cakes are actually better. It's true. All right, next is the fall party cakes. White? Vanilla? Is it vanilla? I don't even know. It's more like wax. Wax and cream. We're going to call them the other fall party cakes because these are not going to finish ahead of those. In fact, this is probably just a zebra cake with brown, Charlie Brown sprinkles on it. If I had to guess. Yeah, not bad, but not great. And the crazy thing is these were on the same shelf, the same display as the Christmas tree cakes, which they've already rolled out, was a whole nother subject. And I'm just wondering who came up with that plan because who's buying these? If Christmas tree cakes are right there, who's buying these? If it's you, let us know in the comments and tell us why, because we need to know, because these are in second place. Okay, next up, pumpkin spice rolls. I'm also assuming that it's gonna be a small version of those big giant pumpkin Swiss roll cakes every grocery store has at this time of year. And I'm also assuming that I'm not gonna like this very much, but I could be wrong. It's got the white icing on the bottom, like the strawberry rolls have. That's a good look for it. Okay, I stand corrected or sit corrected. You know what these would be great for? You could spend $10, like if you were in a pinch or if you're just cheap, whatever your reason may be, we're not here to judge that. You could buy basically five boxes of these, put them in a cookie jar like my grandmother used to do or, or take them out of the wrappers, spread them around on a plate. That's probably the better way to do it and serve these as a dessert at Thanksgiving. You've already cooked all this other food. You spent all this money. This would be adequate. Now, me personally, I'm gonna be judging this on the low if you do it, but I'm gonna eat them. I'm gonna eat them and I'm gonna go watch the Lions game, but I'm gonna be upset there was no pie. These are not bad. Those are in first place because I'm trying to be objective. I try to do that here. Now, just so y'all know, I'll probably never buy a box of those again in my life. At fall time, I'm gonna buy the chocolate 
fall party cakes. That's what's going to happen. But like I said, it's the nostalgia factor. If I'm being objective, the pumpkin spice rolls are probably better. All right, well, I was wrong last time and I may be wrong again because I have very low expectation for these pumpkin delight cookies. For one, Little Debbie doesn't make cookies. She makes cakes, rolls, she makes pies. Oh, I might stand corrected because it smells good. You know what it smells like? is an oatmeal cream pie, which is an underrated Little Debbie, one of my favorites, pumpkin spice cookie. You eat this like a slice of pizza in New York. Last place. Not good, way too chewy. At Thanksgiving, you could put those on a plate and people would think that you made them at home. They would never suspect that Little Debbie made that. That's not a good thing. And then they would talk about you and say how horrible the dessert you made was. I uh, do not recommend those. I feel like they would do better taking that same cookie. The cookie can pass. And instead of doing that, take the oatmeal cream pie filling and either just put that in there with some orange dye like it is, or take some of that pumpkin spice flavor that's in the rolls, put a dash of that in the cream, make it orange or not, doesn't really matter. Put that in between the cookies. There you go, little Debbie. Because I don't know who's buying those. I would imagine the sales numbers on those have to be horrible. All right, there you have it. King Hefe is a really good restaurant. They've got a really diverse menu. They do sushi over there, but they've got this Mexican infusion thing going. Their burger's not bad. Uh, we haven't put it on our ranking yet, but it'll get on there at some point and do pretty well. Uh, it's just a diverse and fun place right there in downtown Florence, and the breakfast burrito is really good. That was the first time I've had that one, and I would get it again for sure. I would tweak it, but I would get it again. So y'all make sure y'all go check them out if you have never had King Hefe before. That was the Jefe de Jefe Burrito. As always, I appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. It helps us out a lot. We really do appreciate it. Look forward to seeing y'all around town. In the meantime, y'all take care and God willing, we'll see you in the next video.